Well, thanks very much, Phil, and um, welcome everyone who's who's watching. Um, my name's Adrian Smith. I'm, I'm actually based in Brisbane in Australia, so it's 7.30 in the evening here, and I'm looking forward to hearing the other presentations. Apologies. That's right, no problem. Um, I'd also like to give a bit of a shout-out to Mark Tuppen, who uh, actually set this up for me, uh, who's based in the UK and, and sort of acting as a bit of a partner for us. So as a little bit of an introduction, um, I'm Adrian Smith. I'm the founder and CTO of, of E7. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit uh, this evening about um, this, the software product and a bit of a case study of an example project that, that we're on at the moment um, that's getting great results with um, our, our system. So just to give you a little bit of a, an idea of what E7 is, if you haven't heard, heard of it, I mean, we've been active in Australia for um, around 10 years now and uh, delivered about 350 projects. Uh, large-scale construction infrastructure projects. And we're a, um, a software vendor who, who builds and maintains a, uh, a software product that's a, a cross-platform mobile web uh, solution that is intended to give um, field-based construction project teams the uh, ability to be able to capture their information and uh, get insight into it in, in almost real time. So, by way of introduction, I guess, a, a little bit of who are the clients we're working with. So as I mentioned, our focus is really large civil infrastructure, uh, industrial and resources projects. So some of our clients include uh, Wood Group, uh, Cellini, Clough, Asiona Downer, uh, John Holland, across a range of different different projects, which I'll, I'll just give you a little bit of insight to now. So as I mentioned, we've been going for about 10 years. Our background is really in in uh, industrial infrastructure, so gas compression, coal wash plants. Um, our, our first sort of major project um, using E7 was um, a project for Shell, which is a upstream compre gas compression facility. So this was 13 fuel compression facilities, three central processing facilities, uh, a power substation. So about $2.2 billion of construction executed in 14 months. And at the peak, we had about uh, 3,000 users in, in E7. Um, moving on towards that, uh, we've been in mine infrastructure, you know, rail infrastructure, uh, parallel runways, uh, gas-powered stations, uh, link tunnels and things like that. And, and more recently this year, we're, we're involved with pumped hydro facilities, um, lithium hydroxide plants, uh, a major a uh, $6 billion tunnel in, in Melbourne, in Australia. Um, something which sounds exciting called Central Interceptor, which is actually a sewerage uh, line in Auckland. And um, we've actually started to branch out into the US this year. So we've got two very big projects in the US. One of our projects is actually five times bigger than our than our biggest project. And um, we've, we've also been fortunate enough to be taken over there with, with one of our clients, Clough, uh, in some petrochemical facilities. So a little bit more about, about E7. E, E7 is intended to be a system that's used on a daily basis uh, that allows project teams to get insight into what's happening. And it has four uh, core capabilities. So the first one really is around site records, which is relates to uh, photo management, supervisor diaries, unplanned events and notices and that sort of site record information. The second part is around schedule collaboration. So we typically will hold the P6 schedule or any other scheduling tool um, and will be used for the basis of progress measurement on a daily basis or, or progress claim verification. Uh, the third part is really around um, resource management, which is, you know, costs, time cards, plant and equipment usage, attendance, subcontractor, um, costs and, and labour. And then the th fourth component is really around providing insight um, on that data. So if you've got the site records, the progress and how much it's costing each day, um, giving you insight into what's happening on a daily basis uh, for earned value and, and production rates is, is a key component of E7. In a nutshell, I guess our, our aim is to provide project leaders with daily insight into what's, what's happening so they get a clear line of sight um, to the field. And that's delivered through, um, you know, mobile app and, and, and web interface and those sorts of things. So I want to talk a little bit about the, the example project that, that we're bringing to the table in this case study, which is 
um, an upgrade to the Bruce Highway. So if you're not familiar with where this is in Australia, this the Bruce Highway runs from Brisbane to Cairns and it's about 1,700 kilometres long. I actually used to work for the main roads department in Queensland and Queensland operates the largest state control road network in the world. Uh, but this project um, that we're talking about today is, is really is CR2SM, which is Caloundra Road to, to uh, Sunshine Coast Motorway. And it's a, um, a project just where it's indicated there, just a little bit about uh, 70 k's north of Brisbane. Uh, the, the project is, is um, a government uh, pr project which has been delivered by a JV between Seymour White, which is part of the Vinci Group, and Fulton Hogan. And the project is in some ways unique because it's um, Australia's first uh, diverging diamond interchange. Um, it's a two-year project of about $800 million in investment. So when we came onto the project, which was only a couple of months after mobilisation uh, had occurred, um, the contract uh, the contractors were using a lot of paper-based um, processes for capturing site information about uh, daily costs and production rates. And a key thing in Australia is a site docket, which is uh, like a, a page you would tear out of a, a carbon triplicate book and you know hand over as a record of, of work or material delivered and those sorts of things. And there was a proliferation of these these types of dockets. In, in fact, there were around 230 contractors, um, contract companies on site uh, when we started and they were delivering at least one docket per day. And that needed to be processed manually. And not only processed by the administration team, but that also went to the engineering team because they had to use it for production tracking. So that was the basis for how they recorded quantities of material moves or cut or stuff like that. So they would break that up in, in terms of discipline of materials and, and pro, uh, pro production tracking and also in different work areas. And they would use that as the basis for their reporting and forecasting that, that they did. So the dockets also had another life where they went through the, the finance team as a way of um, capturing the record of all the work that the subcontractors were doing, uh, which was quite an onerous process because when it came to end of month invoicing, those things had to be reconciled together to generate accruals uh, that went into the corporate finance system. So E7 takes a different approach where we what we try to do is capture data on a, on a daily basis. So what did we do when we came to the, the, the project? Well, the, the first thing is we did, we had to configure the system and set up an, a number of users. So at the moment, we've got around 220 web and mobile users on that, on that project today. Um, and our configuration consisted of a combination of on-site training and remote training uh, and configuration of the system specific to that project. Um, they had their P6 schedule integrated, JDE cost codes integrated, their um, HR system was, was integrated through the API, and we had some custom financial integrations as well. And that allowed all those users to capture data um, in both web and mobile ways and, and visualise that and use that as the, the basis of their daily data-driven decision-making. So the data capture that happens in, in E7 is a combination of um, field uh, personnel, individual subcontractors, supervisors, site engineers, capturing information about progress and cost and, and other site records, typically on a mobile device that then gets funneled back into the web application for aggregation of that, that data together. So um, as you can see here on the screen, we're, we're showing the, the process for capturing a site docket, which happens every day for as a record of work performed and allocation of costs and, and sometimes measurements of progress. And also on the right hand side, you're seeing the aggregation of photos that, that happen uh, for that project and how they get represented, geolocated um, on the project. The project actually used a, a range of different features um, from E7's sort of suite of web and mobile stuff. Uh, subcontractors were capturing dockets, supervisors were doing reviews and approval of those dockets on, on mobile, uh, engineers were capturing uh, progress data about materials moved and, and um, rules of credit uh, based measurements of progress, supervisors were capturing diaries which included photos and commentary and weather conditions and, and all sorts of other things that are happening on, on site and then planned and actual um, production rates that they were achieving and also material costs were, were flowing in it as well to the to the system. So the, the metrics that we we um, 
to give you an idea of, of how that how many uh, how much information actually goes into that you know we're generating around 160 um, diaries per week so this is instead of the supervisor capturing a diary on a, on a paper document he's capturing it um, through e7 through and annotating it with photos and commentary and, and all that sort of stuff we have a bit of a philosophy in e7 where you, you capture the data close in person place and time and that's used multiple uh, for multiple uh, purposes downstream. It might be used for, you know, a daily report to the client. It might be used for building into the diary. It might be used for recording, uh, verifying the labour that was on site or substantiating or refuting claims that might occur on site. So the diary is a really a valuable tool that supervisors capture all the time. We also have supervisors and uh, field engineers and, and other leading hands and, and other staff capturing photos of what's happening on site. And these are photos that um, represent work, good and bad, um, so that it gives real time insight into what's happening and, and creates a lot more richer uh, measure of what's going on. Uh, dockets, as I mentioned, is a, is a really key thing. We're processing around 4,000 dockets per week. So we've taken a process that was ostensibly paper-based and turned it into an electronic process for labour plant um, and material dockets uh, to generate accruals and, and use as a basis for invoice reconciliation. The data that we capture here is then used um, to provide insight to the engineers and supervisors so that they can make an assessment of how much progress they're making. Because if we've captured the cost daily and we've captured the progress daily, then we can put those two things together and generate uh, a daily rate that they're producing and compare that against their, their target or budget rates and so they could make a decisions. And that's that's what we think is the, the key thing here to improve productivity. It's being able to give that insight to the, the field supervision and engineering teams so that they can decide, you know, how much progress did I make today? How much did it cost? And if I keep going in that direction, where is it going to, where is it going to lead me? Unfortunately, I can't show directly the information because it's uh, it's quite, uh, I have to redact some of the information to show you. But here's an example of an automated report that gets generated um, on a daily basis that contains information uh, grouped by supervisors. So they've generated more than 1,300 of these reports. They're typically between 30 and 70 pages length. They include weather conditions, the labour and plant material costs, the production rates, uh, and, they, and it includes the daily rates as compared to budget so that they can look through the report and see their production rates and they use that as the basis of the next, um, the next day's meeting and planning that work. So we've had some great feedback um, from the, the project team about this. Here the project director on CR2SM, Brad Thompson, uh, said that managing a large project of this nature requires fail-safe systems that ensure large volumes of information can be processed actually fast. And the efficiency of the E7 system has helped save the project time and money uh, and minimise the errors and maximise productivity. So that's a great endorsement from the from the project director. Yeah. And the construction man manager went on to say similar similar things about uh, the daily information uh, and being able to, to have that at hand. So just to, to wrap up then, what are the key outcomes that we've, we've achieved on this, this project? Well, we've deployed a digital solution that provides the project with real-time data about what's happening so that they can use that as the basis of making decisions. We've digitised a paper-based process across more than 230 different supplier companies. That process has accelerated the calculation of daily costs and, and production rates because so the by the 10 o'clock the next day, they know how much they spent yesterday and how much physical progress was achieved and, and they can use that as a basis for decision making. Point. And, and then lastly, we've generated uh, an, a huge amount of automated daily reports that help supervisors get those insights. So that's me, um, I'm Adrian Brilliant. Smith. Uh, thank you very much for, for the time and opportunity to present.